Welcome to the Visual Storytelling Podcast. My name is Fred Ranger, and I'm so happy that you're joining us this week for another inspirational conversation. Today, I have a special guest. Her name is Kate Anderson, but I can call her Kiev, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. And uh, she is a film photographer uh, based in Brooklyn, New York right now. She's born in California, in the Bay Area. And uh, she has tremendous, tremendous photos, uh, a body of work that is consistent. I want to talk about that. But first off, uh, Kate or Kiev, <laughs> well, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Well, you know what? We've been uh, discussing pre-show uh, about about the the name, the Instagram profile. Let's get this out of the way. So I was I was like looking at it. I thought it was you know at first when I when I first looked at it, I thought it was Kiev, like the Ukraine, you know, <laughs> city. Yeah. And then you, you told me about the Roman number. So what's up with the name on Instagram? I mean, to be honest, there's like sort of a, a silly backstory on it. But um, I remember when I was like making this account, and I I feel like I've kind of. Uh, pretty basic name um it's not the most like unique um so i remember reading this like people magazine back in high school where it was someone was like we wanted to name our kids something alternative and instead of the like regular caitlin we named our kid like k-v-i-i-i lynn like some crazy long thing and i was like it's like kate so that was kind of like that was sitting in my head and then i was making it and i was Eight, you know, people often do the K and the number eight. I yeah. was like, let's shake it up a little. But most of the time, people don't get it, and then I have to explain <laughs> it. But some people will message me out of the blue and be like, "It just clicked. <laughs> That's what it is." That's it. So, it, 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 true, true story. It happened to me a couple of <laughs> seconds ago. I was like, "What? Yeah." I mean, of course, the numeral number. Um, but more than the actual name or the the Instagram profile name, I think uh, I, you know you've got one of the. Uh, I would say the the prettiest tones and uh, oh my look and feel <laughs> of the photos. Like I can't get enough of it. And by the way, this is was uh, this was uh, your, your profile was uh, communicated to me by by my girlfriend, who was a big fan too. So we're we're big fans of, of your work. Oh my gosh, y'all are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> But can you talk to me a little bit more uh, before we talk about the images? Um, how how you became a photographer in the first place and why you decided to invest time effort in shooting you know cameras, but most importantly, film at the end of the day. Film, yeah. Um, I think I have a very fortunate um, intro to film because I guess a lot of people get handed down cameras from their parents or their grandparents or something like that. Um, I got my first camera um, from my dad <clears throat> and he, I guess his was from his dad, uh, my grandfather. Um, and after they passed away, just pulled it out of storage, was like, you could try this out. Um, my dad used to work um, at Gasser's in San Francisco. It's a big camera store. Nice. Um, and so he has a big background in film photography. So does my mom as well. So I've gotten, I've been very lucky. I think all the cameras I shoot have been uh, hand-me-downs. So I have some medium format um, as well that I've been able to get into because my mom had an auto cord that she was able to hand over and then they kind of showed me the ropes on that. Um, but that was like, I think the first camera I got was, it was the Olympus OM-1. It's like my baby. <laughs> I love that, that one. That's not a bad way um, to start on film photography. Yeah, it's a great one. <laughs> and um, I got that, I think in 2016 or 17, but I really didn't get into shooting film um, during COVID, which I know is a big through line for a lot of folks, yeah. um, was like the early lockdown days, only in your neighborhood. So I ended up getting, um, before I would just do a lot of like trips with my family or friends, I would take photos then, but I started getting much more into like street neighborhood photography uh, in like early 2020. Um, just doing my little COVID walks to get out of the house after working from home all day. And then from there, it's kind of just continued to take off. And I find a lot of joy in it. It's like the main thing I do outside of just like work and hang out with friends and stuff. So it's been And, and really you touched special. on a, a good point. Oh, by the way, this is so New York. What's happening right now? The the po oh, police <laughs> sirens. Sorry, you, you don't even yeah, hear them anymore. You, you're just like, what? 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 What are you talking about? I, I don't. Unfazed. Know. <laughs> It's just funny. I was listening to the. Uh, I was listening to the Mamma Mia. Uh, Mamma Mia! I, I forgot the name of the podcast, but with uh, and they had Jason uh, Stockeasy on, uh, which by the way will be on this podcast too in a, in a few weeks. But uh, 
it was just constant, you know, sirens of police, ambulance, and stuff. It was just so New York. New York you know? thing. I'll, I'll mute myself when I'm not talking. No, 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 no. So don't they're do not it. too loud. But. No, don't do it. Don't do it. We want to hear. Uh, so it's authentic. There you go. There you go, guys. This is a pure New York experience. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so that one is loud. <laughs> I'll mute first. Okay, okay. So basically, uh, my next question is around. Uh, the use of film. So you did mention that you find a lot of joy in shooting film, but uh, again, that those tones that you're getting, is it a specific time of the day where you say, you know what, this is my time, the sun is at the perfect position or the light is so good and then you go out or are you a type of person who will always have their camera on and are ready to take pictures uh, regardless of the light uh, situation? Yeah, I mean, I think um, when I was living in the East Bay, Oakland, Berkeley, um, my absolute favorite time to shoot is our beloved golden hour <laughs> it's like the after work sweet spot um and i think the east bay just gets like this very special light you know because so you've got warm, the golden so gate warm. bridge the bay it's like unobstructed golden beautiful amazing um and a lot of like flats in there so i think you can get light really late like right until sunset um so a lot of my work that's from california um I think also it's just like with work and stuff, I just tend to shoot a lot more um, in the afternoon. Um, I'm trying since being in New York to be one of those people that has my camera at all times. Because um, again, like there's always those times when you don't have it and you see like the perfect shot. Of and you're course. Like, Why? <laughs> Why didn't I bring it with me today? But um, generally late afternoon is like my favorite, but um, I definitely will shoot any time of day and, and make it work. Um, I pretty much shoot, For 35, I, I shoot a lot of just like Ultra Max 400. That's really? like my absolute favorite I, film ever. Getting those, <laughs> those, like, those golden tones on, on there. Yeah. yeah, it's like that or like Kodak Gold. But 400 has been like my my workhorse. That's, I think, pretty much almost exclusively what I shoot. Um, and I guess it used to be cheaper. <laughs> Now a little less no, so. Any Kodak um, film is not cheap <laughs> anymore. Yeah, but, but as for, I think it definitely... It depends, I guess, where I'm at, too. Like, I've done some trips. Like, I was in um, – I haven't shared any of these yet, but I will be posting them soon. When I was in France last fall visiting a friend, and it was, like, overcast the whole time. So that was a big challenge uh -huh. for me to switch it up. And I'm like, you're not getting those, like, bright colors. But I think it was a really cool experience to, like, I think, stretch a little bit of my comfort zone. Um, and I was super happy with them. I think it made me shoot a little differently than I normally do. But – Somehow, I always look for colors. I feel like that's a big thing. So I think when you see them, it'll hopefully fit with the rest of my sort of arsenal of work. Um, just because I feel like I kind of have a sort of consistent thing I like to shoot or the vibe of it, I guess. So, um, but Definitely. yeah, so those will be shown soon. I'm like chronologically posting. So I'm like <laughs> way back in last like October. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, we, we, we can't wait to, to see those. I actually have a trip coming up in, in France uh, in uh, next month, actually. And uh, you're making me oh. want to bring my film camera because... You got uh, to bring one. Come on. I will. I, I mean, I do have this little guy. I will, I will uh, show it to you and I will say it on the mic because we, people don't have the visual. But that's little Yashica T4. So yes, this one perfect. is coming with me. And it's so easy because Good. the Leica M6 is great. This is a great camera. It makes me want to yeah. shoot. But it's heavy and it's another body and the lenses and so on. This, yeah, I mean, yeah. let, let's just get a bit nerdy here and uh, let's do. Let's uh, do it. Let's do it. Let's do the the opening here. Oh yes, please. Side. There you go. Oh yeah. Ooh. We're, we're back. <laughs> we're back in '94. Mm -hmm. Music to my ears. <laughs> the best sound. No, that'll be a perfect camera. Yeah. You can just put it in your pocket and have it around. I mean, like portability is like the absolute must have i think if you're traveling or even just like i think like a daily camera to bring it's like nice to just throw it in your bag or your back pocket and speaking of which um them. how 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 do you decide on on 120 versus 35 uh for, for for those shots that you're taking yeah um i think it's helpful because the 120 camera i use is it's like a minolta autocore twin lens nice. so it's like six by six yeah. um which is often fun to sometimes bring out both because I think I shoot stuff and frame things much differently on six by six versus like six, four, five, you know? Um, so 
it just also i don't know the auto cord's much lighter than you think it would be it's pretty like, really yeah. portable, it looks but heavy. just something about the heavy. ergonomics of it i don't tend to bring it out for just like a photo walk that often unless i'm bringing like a bag and multiple cameras i've been using a lot more for like getting into a bit more like studio work portrait stuff i think it's phenomenal for that it's like so crisp which i really enjoy and also just like a pretty easy to use camera which was a nice intro again into medium formats it felt a little daunting at first um but 35 i don't know i just sort of those are just it's just easier it feels quicker i can just sort of throw it on or put it in my bag and not be as like uh not as much thought has to go into bringing that one around so that's more of my like go-to if i'm just gonna bring a camera for the day i'll just grab one of my 35 millimeter cameras and, what, and what's what what are you rocking uh, right now in terms of 35 right mm -hmm. now i i kind of retired my olympus after a while i had to get the like light seals done it's just a uh, little you know i ended up switching and i've been using all the time um my mom found in storage her old like her uh pentax spotmatic what um, she have all, all, all those love. cameras laying in the, in the in the closet or what like, oh <laughs> yeah God. it was tucked away it's like she bought it in like 75 um i have some old portraits that she had taken with it which is super cool wow. and it's in great condition so i've been shooting that one like crazy um and it's just such a fun does it, the light meter is broken so that's been fun i've been having to like i think i've been like usually i use like an app or something to do that for like my auto quarter this one but it's been i feel like as i've been using it, i'm starting to have a better idea of just like guesstimating which has been a fun thing but that slows it down a little with the spotmatics i'm like <laughs> let me just double check this isn't the internal light meter is such a we're spoiled when we have those so yeah man yeah. it's uh it's it's great uh great to be shooting cameras that were you know back then made with basically metal and like like physical mm -hmm. gear like there's there was no electronic just, i mean yes the light meter yeah. but that that was kind of optional i mean p people back then knew how to read a scene and the light yeah. and so on so i have so much respect for them these days you get a you get a i don't want to name any brands but you get like a, the latest and greatest sony camera you just have to point and you, the, the rest yeah. is all taken care of by by uh by computer so. yeah it's definitely a, it's a different shooting process which i i definitely think i enjoy sometimes it is nice to just sort of be able to just yeah. point and shoot for example but um I, I really like the like slower process of having to like think a little more about, or if I'm with my parents, I'm like always double checking with my dad. I'm like, how's that sound for the scene? I was like, the app says this, but I trust you. So I'm always doing a little double verification. And it's fun to get the scans back and see when they actually yeah. come out well. And you're like, cool, so, I did that. So, 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 so is dad usually right on, the, on reading a scene? He's or? usually pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'll give him a good, yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. It's and uh, favorite lens? I mean, again, uh, uh, this is the the Porsche, and then we can we're, we're not going to talk about gear a lot on this podcast. But I'm I'm interested in and in, in learning a little bit more. And some of the listeners like to see what um, the the creator are using uh, to create all these beautiful visual stories. So, what's what's your favorite go to in terms of focal length? Hmm. I think. 50 50 50 is my go-to nice. i nice. used to shoot i think when i first got the olympus it had a 28 on there and once i switched to 50 i was like what the it just it's so it's so, so different much depth i I, stuff, yeah. I definitely prefer i could even do like a like a 40 to i have a 40 pancake lens on this like canon i've been shooting like a sort of just fun like you know Elon, one of those like last cannons before <laughs> they switch, you know, so that one's been, but I think the 40 to 50 range is like my ideal. I kind of like stuff to be a little tighter. Um, but the 28 was great for, for like, maybe if I was in Manhattan or something like bigger city scapes. But then of course, if you're going to share it on Instagram, they immediately have to like crop everything <laughs> so bad. My, like the bait of my existence it's is the like crop, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just every time I do a four by five, I'm like, oh. And do I do I put white borders or do I? I mean, mm -hmm. you 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 decided to go full uh, screen, if I can say, or, or full yeah. width and wide. And but then but then you're like, ah, oh, you know, there, there's a reason why my camera is you know three by two or four or you know yeah. uh, six by exactly. seven. Exactly. It's always hard because yeah. you're like, I'm not trying to you know posting. It's not the most important thing. Yeah. Um, but it is such a bummer when you have a shot that's like this is so perfect. It just and I don't know, I just, ref I don't want to do the white borders personally. <laughs> I just like don't want like the way it looks for my stuff as yeah. much. But yeah. obviously I like, I don't know, one of those things. Also, I'm kind of lazy. So <laughs> I just want to post what I have. But you'll yeah. see just the way it can totally change a shot. Um, Absolutely. Just the entire composition can change when you cut out even just like 
a small piece of it. So hundred percent. I don't know. Do you, do you Maybe edit? Instagram. Do you edit? Do you edit uh, <laughs> your image before they go on, or is it just straight film to JPEG and then upload? I'll do. Um, again, like I feel like I'm like not the most. I'm decently tech savvy, but like I'll just scan. I have like the Epson V600 flatbed scanner. I'll do that. I just use the like whatever the default sort of like software is. I wanted to try Negative Lab Pro, but my yeah. laptop is so old <laughs> it can't update to the newest. So I'm like either get a new laptop or don't use it, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do a little like posts like Lightroom stuff. I don't like when there's dust all like dust specks everywhere, and I'll do a little like color you know liven things up a little but again i'm like again a little bit lazy with it i don't want to go too crazy um personally i don't want to spend like a lot of time on like one image um so it's like a variation i think it depends but uh of course i feel like i have sort of a general look i'm going for and i think fortunately a lot of time things come off the scanner looking mostly how i would expect or want them to so mm. it doesn't really require a ton of like post edit stuff but i'll let it because you know i got a vision and i want to meet the vision i feel like this could be kind of a weird stigma sometimes around like editing film um but i'm kind of like why not you know you had a thought when you took the picture and like if you want to emulate that as closely as possible i'm i'm all for it so 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 yeah. what, what what's that scanner again i'm actually interested in uh it's the like v600 okay epson epson yeah It's good. I think the one issue is um, you can do 120 and uh, 35 with it, but uh, you can't scan a uh, larger format like 4x5. Okay. So yeah. my mom ended up getting the like V800, which you wow. can do all of them. Because, okay. So I have to like mail her my like backs when I do, when I like do the, so she can scan my film for me. But if I do any larger format. But. Nice. And what, what makes you stop on the street and bring up the camera because again your style is i think you said it best earlier it's like street photography but it's not street photography in the new york manhattan busy intersection type of street photography so, yeah. so what makes you uh, yeah. get the stuff for a photo yeah i i think hmm again like i'm really drawn to like colorful but also kind of like quiet scenes um which You know, you're walking down like in Brooklyn somewhere and I, you know, you just, I don't know, stuff just sort of catches my eye. I think color is a big thing. Um, yeah, I think it was fun because in, it's like before I went to Paris last, last fall, I didn't do like very much, like didn't have people in my photos really. Again, it was like very like solitude, sort of isolated, like neighborhoody type of scenes or like quiet stuff. Um, but I ended up getting much more into like having people in my photos. So I'm excited to share some of those. It feels like a bit of a different, a different, it's like the same style of mine, but a little bit, a different addition, which I was really excited to get a little more into. So I've been trying to incorporate that a little more lately as I've been shooting in the city. But again, I'm like terrified of confrontation. So <laughs> I like, I don't get too bold with the photos of people. Like I could never do that, like street photography style, like in Manhattan, that's like, bonkers to like me um but i respect it yeah like in people's faces it's like definitely a style i am not pursuing but i respect of course and like like to look at but um again yeah i think just overall i think just sort of like colorful quiet and like just i don't know some stuff just like catches my eye and i'm like let's just see how this turns out you know <laughs> Well, I, I, I like how you, even if you take photos of people now, you incorporate that, that, that color, that, you know, that, uh, in, in, how, how do you say that in, in I'm, I'm a French, right? The speaking person. Yeah. So sometimes the, the words come up in French, but, uh, you, the, the, the intersection, yes, between, yeah. you know, how the, 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 the light is hitting, is hitting a certain building, but I, I really want to encourage you to continue for shooting with people because it, it adds another dimension. It adds to the yeah. storytelling and wow, this is, I'm looking at some of the prints you have on, on dark, uh, dark room and it's, uh, oh It's pretty impressive. I haven't updated that in a while either. Well, I need to get my my stuff together. Well, uh, this is already uh, very impressive, so I can't wait to see uh, new prints coming up on there. Talk to me about the about that about you know uh, selling prints. Like, what was the feeling when you got a first person who you know bought a, yeah. an image you produced? 
I feel like the first few I would get, I'd be like, oh my God, someone bought a print. And then I'd see it was like my cousin. <laughs> I'd like place an <laughs> order on the app, that, you know? <laughs> it's like people I knew, which is always really sweet. Um, I've had more often people will just like um, maybe DM me and ask and I'll just print stuff as is. I don't honestly sell a ton through that site. I kind of was using it as sort of a, a cheap way of having sort of a like website portfolio space where I could more intentionally post pictures. But I mean, of course, it feels so good when um, the few people that have wanted to like have a print um, have asked for one. I feel like I'm so stoked about the thought of someone wanting something of mine on their wall. It's like the most humbling feeling ever. Um, so I think I could probably put a little more effort or energy into like selling work. But um, right now it's kind of like it happens, it happens. And it's like a really good feeling. Um, but you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm happy to just be sharing my stuff on, on Instagram with people. Um, and yeah, if someone wants a print, I'm like, of course, let's make it happen. I'll send it to you stat. Um, and, and, just, yeah. and, and talk to me about, about Instagram, because I think for you, again, this is the main platform. You grew a lot over the past two years, uh, seeing the number, I think, yeah, it doesn't really matter the number of followers, but you've got, you know, 12,000 at the end of the day, uh, people that said, yep, I want to, I want to see when uh, Kate uh, posts a photo. So, uh, so talk to me about the use of, of Instagram. I know it's uh, all the photographers I talk to, it's a love hate relationship because of yeah. the algorithm, the ads and so on. But then, you know, it's kind of a necessary evil. I think for you, you're mm -hmm. basically embracing the platform and just using it for what it is. Right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, I like honestly, I quite enjoy it. It is, of course, like the love hate. I think there's especially in the last few months, and I've talked to a few like friends on there about it, like the algorithm stuff is just like has been really hard lately. I, I feel like I had a lot of growth last fall. Um, and then just in the last few months, it's been like, zero. I've like had negative yep. growth in the yep. last few months, which has been really interesting because I feel like there's all these people are like, try doing this or doing this. Here's how you want to, I kind of mix around and dabble and trying all the stuff and it doesn't really do anything. So I'm kind of just decided to buckle down and just do what feels good for me, which is just share at whatever pace I want, post whatever I want. I think I've been before I was trying to keep it a little more like strictly um, photography related. And now I'm kind of like, why not? Like, I'll just share some of my personal life too. And like, I'll just post stuff as I kind of want to, which is, I think Ben helped me cultivate some more, I think positive, like, I don't know, like genuine, like relationships with people on there. Like a lot of my closest friends that I've made here in New York since moving, I met via that Instagram page, which is so special and so cool. Um, because I don't know how I would have made friends otherwise, I guess it's like <laughs> this common interest and we happen to have a lot of other stuff, but Overall, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a great platform. I haven't really been able to get into like Twitter that much. Um, yeah. I like dabble a little, but it just doesn't feel like the same. I don't get as much out of it personally as some people do. Um, but I don't know. Instagram meets my needs for now. It's a really cool way to like, I think, mean, share my work and like my life with people that happen to be interested in seeing it, which again, it's like, yeah, like the 12K was so like great to to meet like even if i have no growth in the next like while like that's fine like 12k is crazy um and that, i'm like super grateful for that um yeah yeah so that's, nice. that's a lot of people uh you know that uh, are giving a vote of confidence saying hey you know yeah. we like your work and we want to see more speaking of 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 work um you've shared recently a series of portraits and they seem to be in a studio so can you talk a little bit more about that project and how it came yeah. about and wow again those tones i have to to congratulate you to commend you because Thanks. even if it's portraits we know it's you because it's the same i don't know approach or vibe like you it's said that so. ultra max my studio ultra, ultra max is the max, secret my, there you go. my old faithful <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no the studio shoot was so fun it's like uh i had a group of um friends met via Instagram that happened to live here. One of them, she lives uh, out of the city a little um, and she does a lot of portrait work um, exclusively. Uh, also some other stuff, but that's like her main thing. And she had reached out to me and was saying that she'd be interested in kind of like showing me the ropes a little on portrait photography, which I was 
so happy that she would want to do that, like a little like kind of mentor thing. Um, and so we ended up renting a studio in uh, Bushwick in the neighborhood. It's called like Peer Space, um, okay. where you could just rent for like, it's like $45 an hour for some, obviously more if it's like a fancier studio, but we just got this sort of this natural light studio um, for maybe we booked it for like four hours. Um, and it had, you know, we got one pole of, or like one pole of the backdrop, which you see, it's like that grayish one yeah. and a few like chairs that were there. And then otherwise just, um, natural light. Uh, so we just kind of hung out for a few hours and switched off posing and taking photos. And it was just like such a cool way to, um, again, like sort of a nice, like safe space to practice portrait work. Um, as someone, I don't do that normally. Uh, and I think it's super fun to get, uh, have your photographers be taking photos and modeling. Cause then we kind of, we're doing all these sort of collaborative posing and ideas. My favorite was that one of my friend with, uh, the smoke coming out of his mouth. Yeah, that was sort of his nice idea shot. that we ended up executing. And I was like, so happy about the results on that one. Um, it's just like a cool way to mess around and create some cool work. And again, like I probably shot three, maybe two or three rolls of 35 and one or two of, 120 and i had some like a i mean i'm pretty much sharing everything i took um so it was really awesome to have so much that i was excited about and wanted to share from from that afternoon and when you say and just, e when you say everything it's everything you even shared the first shot with the i think is it is it Stephen, that Stephen? first of the role <laughs> yeah. i was so happy when i saw that it's it was so like, cool because he's like if he's on fire those. he's like he's on fire or something like it's, and it's great. perfectly below his hand exactly. i was like yes frame so perfectly <laughs> those are the moments where you're like film is so cool yeah, yeah. um just because i mean i kind of took the first few photos we'll see which comes out i don't know the bird could go right through his face not even <laughs> be a cool shot and yeah. it worked out how i wanted and nice. yeah, that was a really cool one <laughs> well, well we'll put the uh the link to, to your instagram definitely in the in the show notes so if people want to see what we're talking about while they're listening yeah. they can click on it um Never shot digital. Don't want to shoot digital. Trying to stay away from digital <laughs> or against digital, it's against your religion. No, I mean, <laughs> digital is cool. I I haven't. Um, I would be open to trying it. Uh, I think I like I said. I've just been really fortunate that I have had a lot of hand me down film cameras, yeah. um, and so that's made me kind of be on this fence of like, should I like invest in? <laughs> And everyone's really into this Fuji world right now. I don't know. I just, I really like the speed of film. I really like going to the lab and dropping my rolls off. And I mean, he has incredibly fast turnaround. So I usually get them back in like an hour or two. And then I immediately run home and scan them. And it's just that part of the process is wow. so rewarding. Um, but again, there have been times where like the, the immediate being able to see what you're getting um, is also really valuable. And I think can help do more maybe intentional work if you're trying to like meet a specific purpose, such as like an event or I don't know. I, I did like a wedding for my friends um, two years ago. And I remember I was so nervous and I was like, I wish I had a digital camera as like a backup just in case. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll dip my, dip my toes into the digital world at some point, but I'd probably see if I could borrow a camera of a friend, yeah, just, um, just to see if it's a good fit. Absolutely. Borrow, a, a, a an X pro two or something and yeah, something um, like that. Try, try those film recipes. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to try to emulate Porto 400, just buy a film camera, put Porto 400 in it. There you go. This yeah. is the best you know way to get exactly. Porto 400. Yeah. But, but I, I think but, it'd be a cool challenge yeah. for sure to, to try digital yeah i got nothing against it again i just it's like i got a big old stock of film in my fridge that i got that i can shoot through so i'm kind of happy sticking in the film world for right now but are you yeah. um did, did, did you try any uh expired film um recently? i have a little i just i think for me i can be kind of a perfectionist and the feeling of shooting a roll of expired film and then getting it back and it looks like garbage is like really a high chance. demoralizing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like oh this hurts like i'm really disappointed um i have some friends that like only shoot expired and have like really cool results and i think maybe some people like the imperfection of that is like what they enjoy shooting it for i think when i shoot i have a very like specific i'm like i want it to look like this and so to not have the that control can be a little 
stressful or yeah a little a bummer if it yeah. if it comes out not looking how i how i hoped but i agree i guess yeah that's so, film yeah <laughs> that's that's definitely it um any source of inspiration uh for you kate so when you you know in a creative rut or something like that so what, what do you do to, to to stay motivated to fuel <laughs> your your passion yeah i i mean i was really struggling with sort of creativity in general uh just kind of in the winter time when I'm here in New York, um, super spoiled in California where we get sun like most of the time. <laughs> so I think, uh, I did really struggle, especially like, you know, it's a super gray rainy day today. Like I have no interest in, like, and by the way, I'm, I'm in Montreal. We have the same weather, Kate and I, and oh. the, the snow and everything. So I go Not also snow. through, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, not today, but uh, it's super great today too. So, yeah. yeah I'm like, I can't play. It's like 65 and yeah. like, you know, it's like kind of warm, but wet. So it's, it's not gray, San Diego so. or, or San Francisco or, you know, yeah. yeah, San Francisco is like, yeah. So I think when I have been in a very like creative rut, I, I've been fortunate that sometimes I've been able to like plan a little trip or something to visit a friend or like a new change of scenery. That's been super helpful. I know like last winter, um, I went home for the holidays to San Francisco and that like really helped me kick that rut to the curb. I was like, okay, let's go out. We'll go in like Marin County is where my parents live. So it's like lots of open space, go out to the beach, like just take pictures of whatever, if it's a sunny afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like my, I just, sometimes I think just time is also what I need. You can't really force it. Yeah. Um, I think moving forward, I think it would be really cool to, if I'm in a rut, like, maybe do the more like rent a studio with some friends and like go do that. I think it's a really nice way to combine like socializing <laughs> and like when you're kind of like in a down yeah. space and like also being surrounded by people with other ideas is like so helpful. Um, and I think you can have a little more control over the environment with lighting or whatever, which you might be struggling with in like a snowy gray day um, in Montreal or here in New York. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, I can definitely relate to what you're saying for me. <laughs> Yeah. It was uh, some days you're like I can't you're like I just don't want to take my camera out. It's e like exactly <laughs> and and definitely uh, you need some sort of you know different angle or try to see life a different way. And uh, yeah. for me, it was books. I mean, a lot of a lot of and and I was trying to avoid social media to be on quite honest because again, yeah, my friends in the West Coast they're having the best time of their life. It's like <laughs> yeah. I don't know twenty degrees Celsius yeah. uh, in winter. Uh, which is not that bad, uh, and 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 here it's just crap. And again, maybe if I was like a a, a real like winter guy and just snowboard and but I I, I don't do that. I you're I, like eh. yeah. <laughs> otherwise it's just sort of this like dismal period exactly. where you're like not out as much as you want to be. It's it's definitely like a weird little little middle ground. I know some people create amazing work yep. in that in those in those environments, but for me, I'm like. I'll leave it to you and I will wait for a sunny day. <laughs> and, and there's also limits to uh, what red wine and playing guitar can do. Uh, you know, there's, there's so, there's in <laughs> That's <trend>. true. <laughs> we'll try another bottle. We'll see exactly. if that helps. <laughs> and, and I want to say on this podcast, it's not the solution, guys. It's not the solution. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what would you like to, to tell uh, somebody who wants to start you know, in photography and is interested in film and so on and so forth. Because if they only look at YouTube and if they only look at Instagram, it can be a little daunting, it can be a little bit intimidating. You think that everybody mm -hmm. is like in a clique or something and everybody's yeah. cool and they're all talented and wow. And so so what would you tell a, a, a young person who wants to, to do exactly yeah. like you did? A no, couple I, years ago? it is daunting. I remember when I was first going to make my film page, I was like, so scared too. I was like, nobody cares about what I have to share. Like everyone seems like you said, it's like kind of clicky. It's a little hard to gauge. Um, for me, and this is relevant because also like my downstairs neighbor is a good friend of mine now and she recently got into film. And so I've been kind of, nice. we've been doing that together. And I think the biggest thing that I've been telling her as she's been getting into it is to just like take pictures of literally whatever you want. Um, I think in the beginning, I really limited myself and I really thought of it as this like scarcity thing obviously I get it like films more expensive now than when I was first and a lot of us were first starting um but I think with film you can have this weird mindset of like it has to be really special or like it has to feel like something to be able to like worth taking a picture of and I think the only way to get better is to just shoot a lot of different things that catch your eye and like see where you can navigate and where that takes you um 
and and not really be stressed about creating stuff that maybe people are going to want to be like consuming on social media um i can feel Mm. that pull sometimes to like you know you post something that you're really excited about personally and it just doesn't perform well yep and you're like i don't know what that's about you're like this is like a very cool picture i'm so into (laughs) but it's just i don't know people consume things differently on on instagram or social media in general and so i think to try and obviously easier said than done but separate yourself from that like validation and look for it like more in yourself or even in like your close friends um, outside of that. Cause it's been really fun even for her, my friends seeing her like start to use her camera more and like take more photos. Like I'm even seeing her sort of like take a little like more stuff that she's focusing on or seeing how stuff doesn't work out. And, and it's a really cool like way to see, but yeah, I'd say just do your thing and like take photos that feel good to you. Cause at the end of the day, they're reflective of you and your creativity. And as long as you're liking them, then that's what matters. <laughs> but again, I, I say it with a grain of salt because validation, external validation is it's hard to escape from. And I'm definitely someone that feels it. So, you know, I think being aware of it is important. But. Well, and, and, and speaking of, of reflecting, you know, yourself in your art and, and the work you do, you did put on your page that you're queer film photographer and i wanted to ask like is is that something that um you know can be reflected in the work you're doing the art that you're creating is that something that's important to you and you want you know to use your art to tell that story like i'm i'm i'm, I'm interested yeah. in learning more yeah i mean i think i kind of just put that on there in general as like i really like connecting with other like queer creative folks um and maybe it's not necessarily like I'm not, I don't, I'm not doing any like profound, like storytelling of that really aspect of myself in my work right now. But I think it is sort of a nice way to sort of personalize like me as an artist on there. Um, And I mean, that's a big part of my life and like me as a person um, is my queerness. So I think it's a nice way to just combine those two things and and showcase me as as a creative and as a person um in combination with my art um because yeah i think it's like there's so many queer people in the world and i don't think i think it's a cool way to like share your work and it's not necessarily they don't need to be tied together um like i could just be making whatever art i want to make but i think the fact that I am like a queer person adds another layer to that and a way to like connect with other people too um, that also have that. I, I, I don't know if that makes sense. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> and I think what it, what it also does is that uh, it also, you know, if, 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 if it, it give uh, people um, an opportunity to say, you know what, me too, I, I am queer and I, I'm a photographer and I can relate to Kate and I can, you know, start conversations. So yeah. I, I, I really like that aspect where you're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm queer, I shoot film, I, I like photography, I like this and that. If you want to chat, I'm open. And, uh, yeah. and, and that, that, is, that, that, that is great because there's so many, honestly, there's so many dudes, <laughs> white dudes like me in, in photography <laughs> all around the world that it's, it's great to see uh, for lack of a better word, diversity. I don't like that word, but that's, yeah. that's the, 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 you know, the yeah. closest thing. The non cis white male yes. perspective. There yeah, you go. that, that. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, no, I think that's a really that's good call. I think when I first started, it, it, there is a very like the white male cis photography world. It's very like present on yeah. there. And I think, um, it's really nice to be able to connect with people outside of that as well. And I think being able to flag that on my account, like is able to like, I've been able to connect with a lot of people. Um, and again, it actually makes some very like genuine personal friendships where we were brought together by film photography, Instagram. It's like such a cool experience. Um, and just very unique to, to the film Instagram community in general. Um, and yeah, I think just making sure there's more exposure of artists of all backgrounds. Um, Because, yeah, I think you can see, I remember, like, people get called out a lot, like, on the feature pages. They're like, hey, the last 10 of your posts you featured of artists are, like, cis white men. Like, let's add a little something in there. There are so many other creatives on this platform that are creating cool work. And 
you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a never ending battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I can, uh, I can really uh, only commend you for, for, for doing that. And speaking of people who are on the platform, any, any recommendation on who should we follow? Like uh, I'm, I'm in, I'm in it for like to discover new people. I, I have yeah. my set of people that I, you know, truly and trust, uh, trustly follow, but like who, who are the new up and comers? Who do you follow? My personal faves. Let's see. Yes. Um, one of my, I love her work. Uh, Grainy Day. Amanda oh, Reeves. Taylor. Do you follow her? She will be on this podcast too. Thank you so much for, oh, uh, really? for mentioning it. Yes, she did say yes. So thank you, Taylor. <laughs> uh, I love that. She is like, yeah. So that's okay. So Grainy Day. Uh, my friend Jimmy Jimbo Jones. He's like one of my first friends ever in New York. His work is incredible. Nice. Um, he's been getting a lot more into por portrait work as well. Um, let's see. I like, I got my little, my little Instagram. Are, are, open, are they so all film photographers? That's my question. All film photographers. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm predictable that way. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, I'm like trying to think who else off the top of my head. I know I love, who's that? It's like suddenly all the people I, all my friend, all the people I like <laughs> to look at are off my head. Uh, Jimmy. Amanda. Oh, uh, Sid, Sid Johnson. Sid, Sid Johnson. Sid Johnson. They're Sid C. Johnson. Yeah. S Y D C Johnson. They have some really beautiful work. I love their stuff. Um, nice. very like Pacific Northwest outdoorsy camping type stuff. I really enjoy. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I just, I just loaded the page. Yeah, man. That's so oh, stunning, wow. right? <laughs> stunning work. I can see why you like it too. The, the, the vibes and the, yeah, I the think tones. it's a very like common commonality there. Yes. Um, I'm, I'll have to I'm make following it instantly people, but... follow. Yes. Yeah. So, well, but there's like yeah. so many cool folks on there. I love. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's very cool. Um, um where, so where can people find more about the uh, UK? So uh, we we discussed a pre-show that you're working on a website, so that will hopefully be up uh, when we publish the podcast. So uh, yes, this uh, is my this is my incentive. This is the kick of the ass that I've been needing to actually publicize it. So <laughs> that'll be I'll put that. I'm sure once it's done, um, I'll put that in my Instagram bio. Replace my old dark room link <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and i'll put it in the show notes too so people can click on yeah, it directly. that's that's my main <laughs> thing but otherwise right now instagram is like my my primary engagement i think with sharing my work and stuff so yes and on instagram you are k v i i i underscore film yes. <laughs> for kiev kiev uh kate uh k v k yeah. yeah there you go <laughs> i know kind of a mouthful but the w good thing is is it, i pop up the k and the v combo it's it's good otherwise it was like kate anderson that's Kate Anderson sounds like a, yeah, yeah, like an actress or something like. Uh, yeah, it uh, sounds like yeah, like a generic name you see on like a credit card <laughs> sample or something when you're buying it. It's Here's like, your new credit so, card, Kate Anderson. Okay. Yeah, no hate to my parents, obviously, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful it's, name, but it's a very common name. Yes, thank yeah, you. Right, yeah. it is. I know. So the V is 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 for now. That's my little brand, <laughs> my distinction. Yeah. And, And, and and I was about to call you Keith. Oh my god! So, you can call me that, Kate. Kate, Kate uh, um, we're we're nearing the end of the podcast. But uh, what's next for you? So so any projects in mind? Uh, you talked about traveling. So so what's the next uh, next shoot you're thinking about? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the nice thing is, um, I think last year I was traveling around a lot. Um, the running joke in all my friend groups here was that I don't actually live in New York. Um, <laughs> you, but, pretend, you pretend. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to be around uh, New York for most of the summer without any real big travel plans. I'm going back to California in July for like two weeks, but otherwise I'm hanging out in New York. So I think it's going to be a really good opportunity to shoot more in the city because I don't have that much uh, New York work. I've obviously some I haven't shared yet, but I think that'll be a really cool way. Like summer in New York is just, there's nothing like it. So I'm excited to embrace all the golden hours here. Oh, yeah. Um, And, and definitely explore a little more of the city street people in my photos, <laughs> photography work, because um, that's been a really, really exciting uh, new addition to sort of my repertoire. So I think that'll be, so no big travel plans for once, but uh, yeah, there's so much to shoot in New York and I'm excited to sort of put my spin on 
shooting in the city here uh, and, you know, maintaining my authentic kind of vision of my work um, while also exploring a really kind of new and like very versatile subject, which is, you know, Brooklyn, Manhattan, etc. So, so, so many, yeah. so many things to shoot to your point. And yeah. um, you've been, uh, you know, shedding a, a different type of light on, on Brooklyn and, and New York. And I, I love it. And I invite everybody to go see it. And uh, Kate, I want to thank you so much uh, for taking the time with us today to chat about film, photography, uh, how you see the, the, the world through your lens and so on and so forth. Um, and I invite everybody who enjoyed this conversation to go rate this podcast. If you'd like to give it a give it give it a five star review for Kate and I, uh, <laughs> yes. in, the, in the comment section. Also, if you want to ask a question, and uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at Fred Ranger on all the platforms, including YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and all this great stuff. And of course, I'll put all Kate's link in the show notes. Go go give her a follow and uh, you won't be deceived. This is, again, probably one of my favorite feeds on the whole internet. So, Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're too good to me. Thank you so okay. much for having me. This has been such a nice, such a nice time. <laughs> well, so. I, I wish you a very pleasant summer in New York City and Brooklyn and we'll talk soon. Perfect. Cheers. Thanks, Brad.